since uh, 2010 and I have had uh, more than eight years of experience and I have come across with almost all the major Pega uh, versions and also enhancements and features being built through. Um, to give you a little bit more about myself, um, I have a, right, a rich experience on business analysis and also I mean to BPM implementations. So would like to take the journey on Pega Business Architect uh, with the recent version 8.4. Uh, however, a lot of things that we going we are going to talk in this session uh, would be touch basing with uh, the Pega story and uh, how the case life cycle has to be dealt so far. And um, you know, what are the new uh, innovations and uh, approaches and methods has come up in case lifecycle management with this version, okay? So I just wanted to give a little bit uh, warm up on, uh, you know, on the core skills that are required to be a Pega business architect. And also would like to, you know, hear from all of you guys a little bit about yourself, not to take too much time, but maybe, you know, 30 to 60 seconds, max to max just to give you a name and uh, what is your core expertise area. If you're already into Pega, maybe in a different role like a CSA or CSSA, I would be great to hear that. Even though if you are not into Pega, but I just wanted to know, uh, you know, what is the strength of the audience who have come or held from business analysis experience. And also not to you know differentiate, but would be appropriate to know if someone is joining for the first time on a business analysis or a business architect related trainings, then I'll be you know, guiding them through what is required and how you can scale up yourself to be a perfect uh, business architect and working on PEGA implementations. So let's, let's move forward. Uh, as you see, uh, there was a lot of slides uh, which are going to take you through the journey on how and where we are and how we would like to get into the groove of understanding PEGA. So, um, from the warm up session, like I said, uh, uh, not to spend too much time, but maybe, you know, precisely 10 to 15 minutes just to get to know how we need to have some readiness and preparedness to learn Pega and uh, how this readiness and preparedness will help you to understand and also, you know, think beyond your imagination uh, and play the role or maybe wear the hat as a Pega business architect. Okay. So this is it. Um, we started off with introduction and trainer and participants and the agenda will be, like I said, uh, we are not going to jump everything into the implementation part right at the first stretch. What we will do is uh, we will just try to learn the drills. It's as good as how you're going to play, you know, football or maybe any kind of a game that you need to do drills first. And once you are comfortable with the drills, then you can get onto the ground and can make your game successful. So let us take it a little bit slow at the initial period. And then once you guys are confident and you have a lot of questions and exchange and all, then we can accelerate to a level where we can have much more fruitful and meaningful conversations. Okay. So uh, just to give you a gist of what is business process management and uh, please feel free to step in and also make the session more interactive but I'll be just giving you a, a briefing on what is it, how is it, and how we can make use of this content and knowledge for our PEGA learning, okay? So as you see from the slide, right, uh, when, when you hear about business process management, as by the definition itself, it says that uh, any organization will have a business and uh, some people will just do things ad hoc. And I say ad hoc, as good as, you know, if I, if you just walk into your home and if your spouse asks you, honey, please book a, a ticket for me. What you'll do is that, you know, either you just go and call up any customer care and you just request for the booking, which will be a phone booking method, or you just wanted to save some money to your pocket and you just land into different websites to go search first and then filter out next. And then you wanted to plan your booking. So, See, uh, when you do something ad hoc, right, it doesn't have a process in mind. But when you wanted to do something which is quite useful for you and saving money, time, and also assured quality, that is when you start following a process. So when you start getting into a site like, uh, you know, Make My Trip or maybe Yatra or maybe any kind of uh, 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 e-commerce site, you just get a lot of options and then you structure your process and then you wanted to reap the benefits of what you wanted to achieve. 
So that is simple terms of business process management uh, in, in a layman's terms. But if you wanted to go with industry standards, yes, there are different definitions coming from all the big experts in the industry and business process management is not started now. It was there from early 90s. Uh, whenever you hear this, these are the three things which should pop up at the back of your mind. And definitely Pega is going to emphasize these three things as and when they are going to work on solution, no matter which industry it belongs to. So first one is about the business process improvement. So in standard things, it says that, you know, you need to realize the change within the context of existing business process. Like I say, uh, if someone wants to implement Pega, right? At the end of the day, your stakeholders will ask, hey, can you show me what is that you have changed with my existing process and what is that I'm going to achieve by it? Are you saving cost to my company or are you going to reduce the headcount to my company? Are you going to automate my business process so that I need not be worried about any errors or any kind of uh, challenges with audit or with by regulatory or by compliance? So these are the kind of questions will come from your project sponsors or from the stakeholder groups. So that is how you need to always be very intuitive, understanding the definitions and also always keep figuring this at the back of your mind. So the next line is about uh, the process reengineering. So this is the place where a lot of radical changes happens. For example, uh, you know, US government said, I just wanted to implement this uh, amendment in one of the financial regulatory act. So immediately all banks has to go and start changing their process or maybe changing the terms and conditions that was already there in the process. So that is the place where you see a lot of benefit of having Pega as a platform to run their business smoother. So it can facilitate n number of changes at any point in time without breaking the actual functionality of the application. So process reengineering sounds very complex, but when you just get into uh, implementations with Pega, right, it is easy for you to just go and configure it. So that is where you know it comes handy. The next part is about process design. So this is completely either you are going to start a new business model or you are going to rebuild a new business process or maybe rebuild the existing process. If I have to give you a quick example for you, it's like renovation of your apartment or a home. Okay. So you have taken a home, which is of some say 2000 square feet, and then you have a very old architectural structure there. And now you wanted to design it, which is meeting and matching to the industry standards. So there you can say that I cannot really get away with this, but I know I can just, reconstruct this or renovate this. So I need a new design. So as an architect, just like in regular definition and terms, you need to think what would be the best possible design to implement the solution so that I can just have everything as a new look and feel. I'll have a lot of new things introduced as a features because Pega is offering me new features. Just to give you as an example, Pega is offering a chatbot. If you go back in the last five years, there is no chatbot in Pega. But now when you're going to redesign it, you also wanted to sell this to your client that, hey, I can do this solution for you. But I also wanted to ask you to give a try with Pega chatbot. Tell you what, while you think like an architect, while you promote this as an architect, your organization will recognize you. At the same time, your client is going to give more business to your organization. So in a way, you are going to support and expand the business. So that brings you a lot of accolades at the end of your project. Okay. So this is very important for you guys to understand from the BPM life cycle, because we are going to talk a lot about case life cycle and how you need to model the cases, everything in the later stage. So there is a lot of different apprehensions from the market and also people who are a part of BPM roles. So I just wanted to depict it very simple for you. There are four blocks, the strategy, design, implementation, and control. As you see, the first two blocks are more of analysis and modeling. So when you see the softwares that were listed at your left side of the slide, that is Aris, Bizagi, IBM, iGraphics, and all, these uh, uh, suits actually uh, you know, spend too much time in bringing a lot of design-related stuff. 
and uh, what happens is the output of this has to be tested somewhere when i say tested somewhere means it has to go for a simulation it has to go a lot of evaluations and see where you can configure it and can see the end result so when you see the right side of the slide which is uh, also facilitating with uh, the business process execution engine is actually trying to help you to connect the dots from left to right so uh, systems or applications like appian oracle bpm pega system and ibm bpm and all right these are the ones not only are going to focus on strategy and design but also they give you an extra mile of having the implementation and controlling also in the same software package itself okay we can have a little bit of q and a as in when you have questions but in the interest of uh, you know uh, uh, the wider audience what i suggest is you just remember the slide and then have a note of your questions and whenever we have a, a breather breather for q and a we can definitely debate about it okay so let's move to business analysis this is our third uh, you know pillar and the warm up session is just to understand from you guys what do you think as business analysis and what exactly our business analyst should be doing no matter which organization or which kind of domain that he belongs to okay so this is a very standard definition which you see on the slide but i wanted to quickly take you to what is the role of business analyst in a simple terms the first thing is wherever you see the bold letters right i just want you to memorize these things because the visual representation is always going to help you to have a pitch in whenever you are going to discuss with stakeholders or you are going to promote yourself as a business analyst or a business architect so first line the identify and defining part second line i think i already gave you an example maximize the value delivered by an organization let's say the previous example introducing that pega chatbot is there it is going to maximize the business value and uh, you are going to generate revenue to your own business okay and also saving money to others as well and uh, the next part is that a business analyst has to do a lot of documentation so which means his analytical skills his logical skills everything comes in handy only when he is going to document it properly and help the development team to understand what is the business requirement okay so the next thing so uh, while i speak about business analysis he he, need, he or she need not be doing lot of programming but they need to be well versed with understanding certain amount of technological terms if i say hey you know anything about database you should be able to explain me back hey do you know anything about data types you need to be able to emphasize and comprehend the conversation otherwise what happens is you do lot of business requirements gathering but at the time of implementation there will be a lot of questions coming from pega development team which makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable and you need to go back every time to the business asking can you clarify this question okay so that is the reason why you need to also little bit be associated with the technological terms which will help in the integration so when i say integrations it can come from any formats you need not be worry about the format you need to be only worried about when i when i'm going to get a source of data how i am going to handle with my development the next two things uh, uh, you know it's about uh, design workshops uh, believe it or believe it or not design thinking is a revolutionary thing now from the digital transformation space and uh, a lot of organizations are going away with the traditional approach and they wanted to have a lot of design thinking workshops in fact if you see from pega 8.4 or version uh, a lot of add ons were given from the design thinking perspective and the next couple of slides will also give you why pega is trying to emphasize more and more on design thinking it's more of prototyping testing and then only you take a call whether to go in implementation at a large scale level or not okay uh, the next part always be in customer shoes okay is you have to carry a lot of weight on your shoulders as if anything goes into mess you have to feel like you know my money is gone and anything comes as a success definitely you are the one who carry the entire thing on your shoulders and because of you only the project is going to be success i think that is how you emote and you be in customer shoes and take the entire journey throughout your role as a pega business architect okay so this is just for your information purpose uh like i said when i see a mixed audience not that everyone can come from ba background but this depicts uh, you know what are the phases 
required and also involved in a project life cycle and against each vertical pillar what are the activities that they do and what are the deliverables expected out of them for example uh, if you are going to uh, take a role as pega business architect right there are certain things in this deliverables which you are been very much entitled to take control and uh, take ownership so for ex for for an instance okay something like use cases user stories building wireframes and prototypes traceability part of it design documentation and process maps data models mvp the user story mapping so it's like in pega world uh, exclusively on the agile front right uh yes you see product owner scrum master and development team but pega business architect is someone who is playing on the top of these all layers and he or she playing a ba role or a business architect role for that matter has to not only just deliver all these things but also should go a step beyond and then say what are all the reusable components that i can have it while i'm working on a pega project and every time when you come across some projects on a similar nature you don't want to build everything from scratch you are the one who is going to act as a library and the moment when someone asks you you say that hey i have implemented this in x project which can be a reusable component for you in y project and that is the value proposition that you are going to bring on board okay so uh, these are just you know a, a little bit of uh, grooming up slides to understand what is business analysis process as per industry standard definitions and these are the certain skills which definitely each and every one of you on this call should have <clears throat> if at all you feel that you don't have it or maybe you just need to do a little bit of your homework to groom up your skills on these things i strongly recommend you to go and then start working on it because i'm sure uh, majority of the percentage people think that they have a very strong footing on the skills but definitely when it comes to modeling or when it comes to documentation and also not that every time you will have a happy customer in in front of you you need to also have a lot of stakeholder management skills like uh, maintaining a tone negotiating with them understanding the requirement taking a proper sign off before you ask the pega development team to start on the use case whatever you work over so all these things matters a lot okay so just try to spend some more time at your leisure hours to go through i mean the internet is full of a lot of stuff there right so please go and then start going line by line whether you hold a good amount of your skills on all these major uh, components if yes i'm so happy if you feel in your self assessment that yeah i need to spend some more time on my presentation skills because i am the one who is going to give a demo of pega solution to my customer so let me just have a little bit more grooming on these things i'll be glad to hear that okay so next what are the key tasks to perform guys don't get distracted uh, between business analyst and business architect uh, from the pega world business architect is going to be a, a superlative role of business analyst okay so architect means you are going to perform beyond these tasks beyond this process beyond these techniques so my only uh, uh, you know uh, point of view uh, from the training perspective is that this is your strong foundation so i'm going to keep on showing these things just to make sure that your foundation is set good and strong so that no one can really you know put you into a, a suffocation mode as and when the discussions happens on pega case life cycle or maybe on to the automation part or understanding the policies or understanding the template creation or reports all that stuff okay so these are certain techniques which you can use as and when you are in demand of or maybe required for the part of your project otherwise these are just standard techniques okay so always keep yourself motivated and i'll be encouraging everyone to start taking some relevant quotes into their personal life so that whatever you learn it's not just about learning you also need to apply and you need to make sure that you feel and reap the benefits of what you have gone through by investing a lot of your time money and energy okay so let's start with uh, you know thinking uh, on what are the different ways that we can work with pega 
and also to do that let us know a little more about pega and uh, from there we can jump into uh, you know the context and concept level on you know how pega has uh, evolved over a period of time okay so um, i'm just going to quickly run through with contents uh, to give you a look and feel of how the sessions the future sessions are likely to land up the first one is we are going to talk a little bit about introduction to pega which covers about the history and the versions that are there and the features that has come up with the recent version the next thing is we wanted to you know spend a good amount of time understanding the role of a business architect and the next thing is that you know uh, how to design a case life cycle um, from from this session uh, we are not going to really open up the pega platform studio and then do everything but i wanted you to get ready understanding how to do and uh, where to go and how to think and how to document okay and the uh, next uh, slides or maybe in the next sessions uh, would cover uh, automation part of it like you see on the subtext uh, it's about slas correspondence routing mechanism the rules the flows and conditions and fifth part which is very important because whatever you prepare in pega it has to be presentable and it has to come up very handy for all the uh, stakeholders and project sponsors that this is what we wanted to see in pega right so it's about re reports creation templates and uh, layouts creation we will definitely consider uh, one of these case studies either banking or insurance and government uh, to walk you through how any business architect would start their journey whenever they are been assigned to a banking project or a insurance project and what all the things that they have to be doing and how people would expect deliverables from them like the way how we have seen in one of our slides in the warm up session right with the business analyst uh, big picture about the tasks followed by the deliverables so we will come to that part in case study discussion uh, so, so quickly landing on to uh, the introduction part uh, please feel free to stop me if you need a break or if you just wanted to discuss anything um, otherwise if i just hear a pin drop silence i assume that you are just following it with a good amount of pace and if i'm also little bit little speedy you can raise your hand on the trainer or no on the participants chat board and i can just take a pause okay so uh, let's start off with pega systems history uh, just a quick facts about what is pega who is the main guy behind this entire success stories of pega and what are the versions that has come up uh, over a period of time and uh, what are the industries that are using pega today and also when i say about the industries i just gave you a snapshot okay uh, it could be even more than those industries but i just gave you a snapshot just to give you a look and feel okay this is the place where i can start my future job or this is the place where i can see a lot of roles getting created for business architects okay so quick facts it launched in 1983 and the picture that you see on your right pane is mr alan treffler uh, he is the ceo and um, you see it's been headquartered at um, cambridge and uh, whenever someone asks you right you should always keep at the back of your mind that pega systems are not just only at one piece of bpm it is also going to facilitate the needs and ask of customer relationship management so whenever someone like listens about customer relationship management take a simple use case that you have a problem with your mobile postpaid connection or maybe a prepaid connection you just quickly dial into a toll free number given to you and the moment you dial someone picks up your phone and then they start you know giving you service so how exactly are they going to work on the service model and how they are going to maintain the relationship with you assuming that you are a, a long runner or a long time customer for that particular mobile company is something completely taken care of the crm software and suit so all this nature and behavior and use cases will be coming handy with the frameworks that were given by pega so that is where a lot of companies are very excited to take pega on board the reason being whenever pega is going to offer pega offers a banking framework pega offers a insurance framework pega offers a crm framework what happens is instead of building something from scratch it's easy to understand the business requirement and configure it according to the country and region i hope i'm making sense if not 
just you know highlight out and i'll be happy to discuss on these pointers okay so the next one is about the timeline um, not that everyone are going to ask any developers about the timeline but definitely sometimes when you are going to a senior stakeholder discussions it's just going it just can come back to you as a surprise where people just may make a point that you know you are a business architect right so you know pega business a lot if you say that yes then definitely they would ask you can you tell me or can you take me back to you know how many versions that pega has and what is so great about the recent version so forget about what is there in past but at least you can just give a, a snapshot view that uh, it started with pega 4 and then eventually now we landed at pega 8 where the entire application is uh, operated in cloud so you need not really require a lot more uh, infrastructure requirement to run pega or to operate pega so that's a simple straight one liner statements okay uh, the next one like i promised you to show some clients or the industries that have been empowered and pega is really making a change for their business process and also giving them lot of benefits these are the snapshots of financial services insurance healthcare and communications life sciences and manufacturing so um, interesting part whenever you see these companies right um, it's not going to be uh, publicized in the internet world uh, but but if you have some connects or maybe if your networking is so good i would definitely recommend you to just check on your linkedin or maybe any of any of your social platforms if someone is associated here the reason being uh i i i wanted to call pega as a niche skill area because um, um you don't find more business architects across the globe and if you really can do a strong networking i'm sure you will going to land up at a at a exciting job where you really wanted to make a change and bring a change to such industries and i don't know what is your academic backgrounds but some people uh, will be very very excited to start a job which is in line with their academic backgrounds yeah so yeah sorry i i couldn't cover government um, but yeah as you see fbi uses it um australia department of immigration borders uses it i think a lot of places in us uk and europe are using it but these are certain references which i can pull it out okay yes so this is most happening platform 8.4 version uh, of course it started with 8.1 8.2 and 8.3 and 8.4 but now the recent version have made a lot of enhancements and a lot of uh, feedback was taken from pega community and um, i i tried my best to depict everything in one slide so that maybe people who are interested to uh, you know keep this as a knowledge deck and take a screenshot or take a picture and keep it at their desk just to be acquainted with so app studio is something that you know we'll be dealing a lot uh, because this is the area where business analysts and application developers spend the initial period uh, of any project and then slowly they move away from this and then take take advantage of dev studio and this is the place where pega csa cssa uh, also lsa would be spending too much time uh, to make sure that the entire end to end package is getting ready Uh, the admin studio is more of you know depending on the application that you are going to build you are going to create a lot of roles and uh, you will be assigning and you are be defining what is that role supposed to be doing prediction studio it's still evolving uh, right now uh, the users across the globe is not that much on prediction studio but this is going to be more of an analytics related uh, work uh, usually what happened in past is that someone works on pega but they wanted to generate anything related to analytics they are trying to find ways how pega can be integrated with uh, anything like you know sas or maybe with uh, power bi or maybe with tableau where a lot of export and import functionality is something very challenging but what pega has come forward after taking a lot of feedback and suggestions from industry experts is that uh, why we need to miss this business so pega also trying to be more strategic that let us also take this analytics business into our pega itself because i am preparing the application i am holding the control of the data 
I'm processing the data. Why at the end of the day, I should give the analytics piece to someone else. So that is how they made sure that they start off with prediction studio where a lot of data scientists and decision architects roles also got created. And maybe one day you might just land up at this role after building a lot of command over Pega. Okay. So, um, now we are getting into the real picture of understanding the role of a business architect. So uh, with reference to uh, who are the major actors, um, just to keep the session a little more interesting, let us, I think most of you people might be interested in movies or maybe at least watched a movie into in their entire lifetime. So let's convert this into a lot of uh, you know storyboarding or storytelling. So as you see from the slide, right? So system architect, business architect, and business stakeholder. Till Pega uh, version seven, these are the main key uh, actors in, in Pega implementation projects. Now that with the prediction studio, you see data scientists and decision architects also coming in, in the picture. But going to what is the role and how I can understand my role is certainly that you be on the top. Uh, the reason being you are going to deal with two people because you are being acting as a bridge between the system architect and the stakeholders. So as you read by the uh, highlighters, um, you are actually going to plan the application and you know how this application has to address the business problem or the business processes. Okay, so as to do that, you are going to spend a good amount of time on your sprint zero uh, guys, I'm just trying to use a little bit of uh, agile language. If anyone is uncomfortable, just highlight that out uh, because I just wanted you to also acquaint with that. Uh, so sprint zero or maybe sprint one is actually dedicated to discuss about the business problem statement and how we are going to address the problem statement and what is the strategy to move forward. That is how you are going to engage your business stakeholders. So business stakeholder will give you a vague or maybe some half cooked uh, business problem, but it is your job in your responsibility and key takeaway is to outline those problems into a proper business objectives. And while you are going to discuss about it, it will also strike at the back of your mind that, okay, this is the kind of business requirement that I'm going to give it to the architects or system architects team and they need to build the application end to end. Okay. So once you start capturing the requirements, there are uh, different ways to capture the requirements, but from Pega, uh, you know, widely used uh, technique or method is uh, DCO. So in, in Pega language, we call them as DCO sessions. So it's like, you know, direct to, uh, you know, capturing of the objectives. Uh, what we do is, uh, you know, it's, it's all about how you interact with the client, how you gather the requirements and how you capture them so that your Pega development team can understand these requirements. Okay. So it's not that you're going to play a technical role, but definitely you should be able to understand what Pega has and what Pega can offer and what are the limitations of Pega. If you don't know that, then it will be very tough for you to translate those requirements into the language where the Pega development team can understand as simple as that. Okay. So as you see from the right side uh, pyramid uh, there, um, you are going to liaise with system architect. Typically uh, you call it as LSA, the lead system architect, who is the one having a, a, a complete uh, holistic understanding about the Pega application or the version being used in the organization. And he or she playing a role of LSA will actually liaise with you to understand the problem statement and what business actually wants and also will help in setting the, uh, the big picture for Pega application to develop further. So he is the one who is going to take the ownership of the entire application build and always come back to you asking, Hey, can you explain this requirement to me? Or can you just uh, go back to business and ask certain things? So why LSU always comes back to uh, the business architect? Uh, the answer is very simple. LSA may not be able to comprehend and go directly strike a discussion with client in the language that client understands. 
if you just go and ask client hey can you tell me what is the data type i have to use in the customer login screen then client will go bonkers because client never talks that language so you have to get back to business architect and then say i need to set some data types in the customer login screen can you just go and ask or maybe can you just help me out so there could be standard things when you are going to uh, have a user name it could be uh, you know either alpha numeric or it could be just alphabet or it could be whatever the combination that you are going to set and when you are going to have a password it could be a strong password where you can go and follow the industry standards and policy or you can come back to client and can ask if client says that just put only numericals as my data entry part or a data type part then that is how the lsa is going to work at the end of the day please be mindful guys uh, you have to be very thorough with the requirements understanding and taking a sign off from client and uh, believe it or not as the lsa and this development team is going to work very aggressively in multiple projects they just simply go by book whatever you write in the documents is something they consider it as a bible so they think you are right so they are just following your footsteps sometimes out of their uh, you know extra mile effort they may just encounter a problem and come back to you but otherwise if even if you give us you know a typo in your requirement saying that this is the organization name i'm just giving you just as an example let's say microsoft wants to have it and then in your document you have forgot to put uh, ro and you have written as mic s or ft so the entire application build will go with microsoft so this is the kind of uh, attention as a business architect you have to play and also uh, you need to make sure that all your requirements are properly being taken care so requirements management also is your part and parcel of life okay so uh, so from the stakeholder and to the architect and to the system architect so when you see system architect csa uh, cssa lsa are the key roles when you see business architect pega the cpba from the uh, the business architect is a role and stakeholders could be anyone coming from different organizations okay so let's move uh, on the role of it i think i just covered everything if you have any questions you can just raise it out otherwise it's as good as how uh, the business analyst performing today in day to day functions right he or she is going to perform the same in business architect role in pega as well um these pointers were taken yeah i think i just touched base with dco capabilities right we will speak a little bit more about dco in the next slides okay yes so this is definitely a copyright of pega platform uh, the dco direct capture of objectives so from the ba perspective there are different ways to deal with the requirements uh, uh, from the initial stage to take them to the design level uh, like i said you will be using a lot of different tools and techniques which comes handy for you either directly using a software or you can use a piece of paper or maybe you can use a template it all depends with what kind of organization that you work for but these are the four major uh, tasks to be uh, taken up and also you will be contributing to it the first one is you have to facilitate uh, all the discussions uh, and the sessions among the project stakeholders that you identify so just like any other ba identifies you need to sit down and then understand who are all your stakeholders and put a weightage against each stakeholder because a stakeholder could be a political view person a stakeholder could be an influencer a stakeholder could be a subject matter expert a stakeholder could be an operations guy okay just try to visualize that and then start putting on a, on a piece of paper and then plan out how you would like to facilitate and then start building that relationship and how you are going to manage your entire sessions the so next one is reduce the time between obtaining requirements design and implementation so the whole objective or with the whole point of having dco method is to reduce the time in getting the requirements and also applying that requirements to shape up a design and also see that everything taken care when it comes to implementation phase not that you have i'll give you an example uh, you have to uh, there is a there is a screen that been built 
and which says that you know if you need any further help please please click here so what happens pega application gets developed but no one knows what to put at a at, at that hyperlink as help text so who has to give the help text for you either the business architect has to prepare and give it to the development team or the business architect should go back to the client and ask the client what is the help guide should be placed there if there is a standard guide which was already maintained by organization right you need to take a copy of it and you need to give it to the development team where they will not forget to configure that as a part of pega implementation okay and the next one is focus on the desired uh, business outcome so each and every requirement that you speak to the customer there should be a tangible output so if there is no output which means that just for an information purpose which will help you to articulate and get an output so please remember guys whenever you think of a requirement there should be some end result to it let's say for example i am working on a requirement which has to have a login page what is the end result of a login page the customer has to successfully log into the application and should move on to the next page that is the end result so the way you think the way you articulate in more simple terms will actually help you to build the design properly if you are trying to complicate that then definitely your system architects will fumble and they will not be able to understand the requirements but in a typical practice and exercise people say that they got it but they just come keep coming back to you asking a lot and lot of questions about it so just try to make sure that you do it right at the first time that's my piece of advice and the next one is speed up and simplify the application development which is subsequently what you've been working from the first three pointers so i'm not not going to talk too much about these tools like i said um uh pega has got more to offer so if you are guys are using jira confluence or maybe any kind of uh, project management tracking tools uh, in your organization pega has also started integrating such rich function functionalities in the latest version pega 8x where you can start writing your user stories directly in pega itself and also you can start writing your test cases in pega itself which can be linked to your user stories and also your pega development team testing team and architects team everyone can be mapped as a role user there which we will see in next forthcoming sessions in tool itself but for now i'm just giving you a, a brief uh, uh, you know or maybe i should say a snapshot of what all the things are available and how you can be uh, benefited by using those things like case designer workbench and agile studio okay uh we will be talking a little bit more about these things in the demos uh, or maybe are the use cases that we are likely to put up in the next sessions but it is these are the certain common approaches uh, from the dco standpoint um yes this is very important uh uh earlier the naming convention is mvp minimum uh, viable product now they just wanted to be catchy and also try to make it more more user friendly so that's how it's just translated or maybe it just has got transition to be a minimum lovable product so we talk a lot about micro journeys just to understand a bigger picture into small small buckets and then start preparing them and then personas and channels this actually helps a lot that um how many actors are involved and uh, how many uh, actions that an actor can perform it can be a one to one relation or it could be one to many or it could be many to many okay and then we're going to talk about a little bit on data and interfaces cast types decision strategies and robotic automations uh, but this is more of a, a overview slide for you uh, i'm not going to spend too much time in this session we'll definitely go and then spend quality time on these things but i just wanted to give you a a feel on what a micro journey talks about and how all these elements are going to be a part of that micro journey in the next slide so without waiting long let's move i'm sure you are able to read the content here so as you see from the micro journey uh, snapshot uh, you see stages you see a uh, end to end value chain or a process and also you see lot of activities and steps that are involved in each stage beneath there are personas who are going to actually deal with this kind of stages and activities 
and beneath that you see the data types that were created to make sure that this piece of exercise as a part of micro journey is where i'm going to deliver okay so this is a simple uh, process uh, where anyone would have been uh, you know easy to explain or maybe you have gone through such phases it's just that uh, it's a it's a part of a hr process uh, on how you collect your resume and how you plan for interview and how the decisions will be taken basis on your business sponsor or by your hr manager and how the offer letter gets created and generated and will be taken for the closure so as you see uh, these are the major steps and these are the personas involved there so as you see applicant is there consult staffing consultant is there and hr on board when you say on board means like sometimes just to jump into a little example uh, when you have applied for a particular company you will be given a reference id what we will call in pega language is that is a case id okay and um, once you have a reference id if you wanted to inquire what is the status of your application what we will be doing you will be just sending that uh, as a reference or a subject line to the email and inquire with the standard uh, you know uh, job portals email asking where is your application but in pega you can actually convert that as a chat bot and if you are going to ping the bot say this is my case id or this is my reference id it just understands that okay you are referring to case id and it will pull out the latest status whatever is there on that application for example let's say all your decisions are been made and uh, you know it is waiting for a approval from the decision maker to release an offer letter if they would have maintained that as a status quo from that pers particular persona then whenever the applicant is going to send that request through the bot you can get that update so it's it's i'm not just going to say it's easy but it is something that you can achieve as long as your requirements definitions and your requirements are clear i hope you are getting it if your requirements are not so clear enough right then your application development also will have its own toss okay so yes these are the three pillars which pega uses as a mantra so the one is viability and uh, the next one is desirability and next one is feasibility so while you are going to discuss and uh, do a lot of briefing and debriefing sessions with your stakeholders and with your architects this is the place where you think uh, in 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 these dimensions at one point of time you think as a business and you see whether this requirement makes sense at another time that you say that you know okay i have to just think as a user whether i can be able to uh, get what i want and the other part of it that you need to see what are the limitations from the technology standpoint is there to go and implement this uh, you know business problem as a and also to come out of as a uh, a viable solution so so that's where they are just finding this little space where everything gets intersected as lovable okay so quickly um getting into case life cycle design i'm sure this just depicts a process flow for you guys but this is how pega wants the entire standard requirements definition to put up and this is how the application should work so first stage second stage and then nth stage or maybe the last stage to close the business uh let's take a quick example on that you want to fly uh to for your holiday destination okay what is the first stage and what is the next stage and what is the last stage you start thinking at the back of your mind if you ask me to uh, speak up how i would think i would say the first stage is whether my manager leave you know <laughs> approves my leave application or not because without which i cannot really start planning my holiday so that is my acceptance criteria so uh, okay let's consider the case my manager has approved my leave so what is that i'll be doing i'll be just getting on to internet and i'll be checking for a holiday destination packages etc etc so that is my first stage so how i'm going to do it is where i'm going to define my number of activities there so let's assume that okay i made a selection what's next next one is i need to go and i have to book and confirm without booking tickets and confirming my date of uh, itinerary i'm not going to make this trip happen right so i'll be doing that in my next stage so once that is done 
there should be some kind of an output for it right like either you pay or you just transfer and then you finally see the end result that yes your tickets are confirmed your tickets are booked so and so is the time of your itinerary and blah 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 so take a use case which can be simple for you to demonstrate and then start translating that into pega case life cycle which are like defining the stages first so stages are very very important and they are the primary inputs for anyone to think of application development so let's move a little bit on the business view i'm sure more than 70% of this audience would have definitely used e-commerce websites it could be amazon or best buy or maybe if you are in india then you have multiple options like flipkart mintra jabong what not so this is a simple example to explain and uh, detail out how the stages works so when you see new order which means uh, you or me placing an order processing means yes it's it's just about you know making some payments so that you get whatever you want as per the order the next one is fulfillment uh, not that uh, uh, you know everyone will have every complete uh, value or a supply chain at one place it could be that collaboration and uh, some kind of tie ups will be made so the fulfillment team uh, gets these items to be picked up from inventory and also shipping stands to be the same you you can have a amazon shipping or you can have a blue dart or you can have a fedex so based on your order your processing your fulfillment the shipping also will be taken care okay so this is how you have to think and elaborate uh, your understanding of requirements to your system architects now going by the definitions what is a case and what is a case type i'm not going to you know spend too much time here by now you'll be almost getting into the groom groove of uh, what is pega language to be spoken let me take you to uh, uh, you know a uh, couple of other slides which will give you a little more uh, understanding of it so these are the stages what we design sometimes there is a exceptional flows and also there are alternative flows so what we call in pega is alternate stages so for example you did everything in a happy path okay but there is an alternate stage where you can go and you can cancel your order also right so while you are designing these stages you also need to design from the 360 degrees what more can happen with this order or what more can happen with the user behavior for example a person like me i i just go and i just close the order and i will not you know think about it in the second chance or a second thought but maybe uh, it could be a, a well explained or maybe you know well observed scenario from a lot of my friends and my network group that they first will go and they just make the order done and then later they just think about it do i really need this item so there could be numerous reasons for going and canceling the order right so that is where you need to also design your application in such a way how am i going to handle my alternate stages so this is one slide which explains to you on how to get into uh, alternate stage uh, understanding and as you see on the right side of the pane which talks about cancellation so cancelling an order how to process it how to refund it and how to notify it guys in the next forthcoming sessions i will just give you some kind of you know uh, uh, how i put this more like a sticky notes where you should start getting adapted to it so when you talk about pega right one is stages another one is activities another one is data types another one is sles and the other one is alerts and notifications so these are all like don't make yourself feeling that am i a developer to remember all these things no but as an architect your requirements are actually going to fill in their their buckets so the development team keep coming and asking to you that okay you say notify customer when should i notify customer as soon as the payment is done or as soon as the fulfillment is done or as soon as the shipment is done or you don't want it to notify the customer until and unless the shipping gets created makes sense right so typically if you understand the behavior of amazon the moment you go and put an order and you start processing it and you stop it you will just get an sms notification saying that hey there is an order waiting in your cart you have started processing but for some reasons it didn't work 
you wanted to go back using this link and then want to complete the transaction that's the level that you know uh, a lot of design thinking has come forward and these are the guys who wants to make the solution as simple as they can okay i hope uh, you're able to get aligned to pega and different methods of thinking how the case life cycle design can be thought through in terms of uh, you know requirements and also playing a role as business architect uh if you if any one of you are coming from banking domain here i think they'll be more glad and happy to see such kind of a lending life cycle uh it talks about how the lending life cycle happens so even if you are not from a banking domain i am sure that a lot of people would have opted for house loans or maybe personal loans and all and the story remains the same probably you might not have observed while you are taking for it but now that you are anyways in this discussion so you see anyone wants to have a loan right these are four high level stages origination to closure and when you see the personas on top of them customer loan officer finance department and title officer so this is how you are going to capture the requirements following strict guidelines of case life cycle because when you follow these guidelines trust me you need not do a lot of back and forth discussions with your clients your client will be also very delighted that you got the requirement right at the first time itself okay so this is how you start writing it and representing the stages and how each should behave act and then move forward so now it comes to few more guidelines how to name the stage how to limit your number of stages because you cannot really write the entire thing at one stretch you just always need to break it into small small chunks so that the dev team also would be able to understand requirements and can create their work packages on how these things can be configured these things can be modeled how many actors are involved how to route any case from step by step so these are very good guidelines that you would be requested to follow and it becomes more of a best practices i would say uh taking the time into consideration uh, i would suggest uh, you know let's let's take a break now uh, for q and a session and uh, after q and a session if you still have uh, some more breathing space uh, then let's let's continue with next tech slide deck uh, otherwise we reconvene for the next session as per the schedule committed to you guys okay now the forum is open for q and a and please feel free to step up and you can either write in the chat board or you can just unmute your mics and you can talk 